I'm a teacher, so I do have a tendency to go into classroom mode. My apologies if this causes anyone to be anxious. So hands up if during a maths lesson you've either had the following thoughts or if brave enough, ask your teachers these questions. Sir, is this important? <laughs> Why do we need to learn this? Where am I ever going to use this in real life? Thank you for your honesty. You can put your hands down now. Unsurprisingly, I get asked questions like these quite often. And while on the surface, these questions might annoy teachers, they do raise some important points. Firstly, for most students, the answers they probably want to hear are, it's not, it's in the curriculum, because it's in the test. No idea, you're not going to. And that's because under the guise of these seemingly insightful questions, what they really want from me is permission to opt out of doing classwork. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, it didn't work. Secondly, these questions highlight the importance that purpose has to the motivation of learning and the learning process. However, these two points are ideas that most of us are already familiar with, either from our own learning experiences or from educational theories. While I agree that actively learning mathematics should be a purposeful process, what I would like to share with you today are my thoughts on what that purpose should be, and hence why we should be doing mathematics every day. I can tell you, it's not about getting a job, not getting good results in a test, and it's not even because mathematics has some superficial connections to real-world applications. But before we begin, it is important that we have a shared understanding of what mathematics is. And that's because there isn't a generally accepted definition. Rather, we tend to define and describe mathematics by a collection of related concepts, such as number, measurement, algebra, and so on. For me, at a rudimentary level, mathematics is about patterns. Now, you might be thinking I'm referring to the patterns that you see in school, like the sequences of numbers or diagrams, or even decorative images like tessellations and fractals. But I'm speaking more generally. Patterns are the regularities in the world that we see in our daily lives, from heartbeats to petrol price cycles to the circle of life. Patterns are about objects sharing a set of properties or characteristics, the chains of cause and effect, and the sequencing of events. Pattern recognition allows us to form generalisation and hence make predictions. And that is why mathematics is so important, because patterns are everywhere, ingrained in both society and culture and how we perceive the world. We know as humans, we have evolved to see patterns. We have survived because we're able to recognise them. We know which animals to avoid by the coloration of their skin. Through recognising cause and effect, we've come to know which foods are safe to eat. By recognising cycles, societies have convergently created systems to regulate and measure times, like the formation of our seasons and our calendars. Without patterns, Learning to communicate would also have been difficult. I'm sure whatever is your primary language, you can find some patterns in the way you speak, read or write. My fascination in patterns is why I would have studied psychology if I didn't become a maths teacher. Psychology is the pattern of human nature. We see certain people behaving in certain ways and we try to understand why. We like to put labels on them, like extroverted, or neurotic. <laughs> Since ancient times to even modern days, we have tried to group certain behaviours into personality types, like in the Myers-Briggs, or conversely, attribute stereotypes to certain groups of people. And if we look at ourselves, do we not have a set of predictable behaviours that we follow? For example, when we wake up in the morning, when we first hear that alarm clock. Or rather, these days, the alarm clocks are not phones. And if you are like me, and are the night owl as opposed to the early bird, your daily routine might actually begin like this. <laughs> and once we're finally awake, 
we have a sequence of events that will follow before we even head out that door to work. <laughs> Heaven forbid the coffee machine is broken or any one of these events do not happen. We know how quickly and drastically a moose can change with even a slight alteration to this sequence of events. So where else do we see patterns? Music. You've heard earlier that I've got a passion for music. Music isn't just about the musical notes. Rather, it's the patterns in both the pitch and the rhythm. And this might be why there is such a strong correlation between mathematics and music that we constantly hear about. Because at its core, both these fields involve patterns. And because pattern recognition is innate, even if we don't play a musical instrument, music still resonates with us. We can see this manifest physically, such as in dance, or even the simple tapping of our feet. Music stimulates a pattern recognition system in us. It allows us to connect to our inner souls, and even to each other. By merely playing a rhythmic sequence, I can have nearly all of you thinking of the same song. So patterns are all around us, and pattern recognition is intrinsic to us. If we can keep to the idea that mathematics is about patterns, then perhaps for some of us, we can start detaching ourselves from the anxiety that the thought of having to do maths can cause. And this is especially important if we want to be doing mathematics every day. So what is the real purpose of doing mathematics? In my view, mathematics makes us smarter. It improves our ability to process information in both quantity and the speed, and improves our logical reasoning. If we think of our minds like a computer or smartphone, then doing mathematics will upgrade our minds by stepping up its CPU and RAM. In other words, our processing speed and working memory. And when we have an improvement in these areas, it will improve other areas of our lives. So where in our lives could these upgrades benefit us? Well, there's decision making. How many decisions do you have to make in a day? How many instances of risk assessments do you do? We have those mundane decisions like what to eat for breakfast, to the consequential kinds like saying, yes dear, you're absolutely right, <laughs> even though she isn't. <laughs> and then you have those life and death situations, such as when a car is coming towards you, not acting quick enough and you can have yourself a collision. Too hasty a decision and you could put yourself in more danger. Too often we think that these two options, a quick decision and a correct measured plan, are mutually exclusive. But what if this isn't the case? What if you can have both, a well thought out plan and one that's arrived at quickly? And that's what I believe doing mathematics every day has to offer. And one of the things that will help us to make quick and accurate decisions is the ability to recognise the change of cause and effect. A causes B, which causes C, and so on to E. With enough repetition and regularity, we would generalise that A causes E, and if A doesn't happen, neither does E. And anything in between is now subconscious and skipped over, saving us mental resource. How many of us would set a GPS as we set it to unfamiliar territory? To set it again as we head back home, but only to ignore it when we hit, say, that freeway. We've probably all experienced it. We've gone into autopilot, we've pulled up into the driveway, and bugger, we've realised we've forgotten to stop at the shops on the way home as was intended. So, now that we've come to understanding that mathematics and the mind are related, I'd like to share with you how I arrived at this conclusion. It occurred to me in my early 20s when mobile phones and personal computers were starting to become popular. I challenged myself to do a logic-based game every day, like Sudoku. And day by day, I noticed I was getting quicker. And it couldn't be attributed to memory because I was doing new and different puzzles every day. Rather, it was because I was recognising certain layouts of numbers and applying logical reasoning that I was becoming quicker at. I was becoming better at recognising the chains of cause and effect. 
Here is another game that you would all play as a youth that you would also find familiar. Given enough time and practice, we start to find certain number of layouts and know the implications. No longer do we have to think the what is. We know based on certain patterns where the bombs will be located, such as these one, two, one, and a three next to row blocks. So is it just me, or do we have some evidence out there to show the importance of maths to our mental faculty? Well, I've looked at over 700 Year 12 students and traced back to their Year 9 standardised test of reading, writing and numeracy. And I wondered, could these Year 9 tests be a good predictors for their Year 12 aggregate scores for university entry? Well, let's look at reading. A weak correlation, but clearly important. Writing, similarly. Now, have a look at numeracy. A much stronger correlation. And this was supported by a study from the National Academy of Sciences that looked at the opposite. What impact a lack of mathematical education can have? They found that a lack of mathematical education affected key brain areas related to reasoning and cognitive learning. And this in turn affected future mathematical attainment. It also hinted that mathematics played an important role in the brain being able to form new connections. And this was found in another study by Notchi, where within four weeks of playing brain training games, there was a vast improvement in executive functions and processing speeds in elderly patients. So how else do we know that mathematics is related to the mind and intelligence? Well, we seem to have it embedded in our own culture and biases. Imagine a person admiring da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Now compare that to someone looking at this. No offence to any artists out there, but who do you automatically assume to be smarter? <laughs> and have you ever had a discussion with people about how good they are at mathematics? I have that conversation quite a lot. <laughs> and over the years, I've noticed something interesting. People can talk about being bad at sports, not being able to play a musical instrument, or not even be able to speak a second language. And while there might be a bit of regret, it is essentially waters off a duck's back. However, as soon as they admit the bad at mathematics, it's a different ball game. You can see in them a sense of shame. There's something about being bad at mathematics that's rocked them to the core of who they are. And the only thing that's come close to this is not being able to read. Why the shame? Because we associate mathematics with intelligence. If we feel like we're bad at mathematics, we might feel stupid. And yet, on the other hand, we feel chuffed when we can do something smart, where we can answer those maths questions like on who wants to be a millionaire or on a radio quiz. I mean, we love it when we get complimented on our intelligence. We can't even help ourselves as a species. We call ourselves homo sapiens, after all, the wise man. So the reason we need to be doing mathematics is not just for a job or to be functional in society. Instead, it's to improve our processing speed and our reasoning. It will help us to make quick and accurate risk assessments. Doing mathematics will improve our ability to recognise the chains of cause and effect and act on them quickly. And when we have an improvement in these areas, it improves other areas of our lives. And if we become smarter, we also feel good about ourselves, so we also get a boost to our mental health. I trust that today I've given you a different perspective about mathematics, one that will lead you to not fear it, but to embrace it, perhaps one day to even love it. But either way, just know that it's something that we can all easily engage with, and we should, given how patterns permeate all aspects of our lives. So go ahead, challenge yourself, do some mathematics every day, whether it's a simple calculations such as when making purchases, or play some logic-based games where there are now plenty online. How about when you make your way home today, you calculate your time of arrival? As a mathematician and a musician, here's one way to sum up my perspective on mathematics. <laughs>